All right, I'd like to start off by saying Barakate Hawa, Bashem Yahweh Shai, Bashem Rakako Dash. Uh, welcome to another lesson, a uh, live lesson. <clears throat> I usually like to do my lessons outside, you know, on the streets, but um, today, uh, <clears throat> being so called Labor Day, um, I know that there's going to be a lot of uh, people out there in the different spots where I usually go to. So and be, bear with me, brother. This fucking chair is, is acting up. There's always something. Satan's always got, you know, he always got something up his sleeve. So this, you know, this uh, seat's going to probably keep going down, but the hell with it. Um, The name of this lesson is the name Jesus Christ shall be taken away because you know, over the years, you have people that have been clinging on to that name, so-called Jesus or Jesus Christ. And that's not the Heavenly Father's son's name. <clears throat> that was never his name. That will never be his name. The only place that that name has any credence is in the mind of the ignorant. And uh, the Lord said, you know, Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai said, let's go that in the book of Acts. 17th chapter and the uh uh just bear with me one second 30th verse and the times of this ignorance the most high winked at but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent so the most high there was a time where he was winking at the ignorance because you know if you don't have the knowledge you know of these things you know how can you be uh held accountable for it so now what the lord did was he took away that um he took away that uh excuse from these people by providing what's known as the internet and allowing this word to be pushed out there on a high frequency and all types of edification going on out there uh to teach this word so that kills anyone that says well i didn't know uh you know because the most High made sure that he proclaimed and published his word out there for everybody to see you know and these people have no excuse and the only reason why they would cling on to this image of so-called Jesus Christ is because they're going back and we're really worshiping Serapis Christus, you know, which was the um, the invention of Ptolemy the first Soter, which the word Soter means uh, savior. And really, technically, if you wanted to so-called put a Greek name to so-called Jesus, it should have been Yesoder or something along those lines. And I was reading something online that really, this is the word for savior, really. That's what they should have been put. But they say pretty much that that name Jesus means hell, to hell, hell Zeus. But, um, you know, there's all different types of information, disinformation out there. Uh, the yay sayers, the naysayers, the ones that present their argument on the, on the behalf of so-called the name Jesus, the ones that present their argument against so-called Jesus. But we're here are not really concerned so much with all of that uh, all that rhetoric <laughs> all that rhetoric you know we're more concerned with the origins of the name of our savior our lord and savior yahweh shai and this is not that dude here this is not him this is none but the devil that the bible speaks of you know so what we're going to do in this lesson lord's will i did the spanish lesson going into it and our uh, lord's will we could do it in the english and uh, get some understanding of, and clarity on this thing. Because this name is going to be taken away from people's mouths. Because the only one that's going to get the Lord and the praise in these last days, when, when all hell breaks loose and when he starts to open up upon uh, these people and upon this society, is Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai. All right, so let's start off in the book of Proverbs. 30th chapter and there are things that are there there are things in the bible that are written for a specific reason 
you know, not a specific reason, but a specific reason. And um, a lot of people tend to ignore it. They tend to not um, take heed to certain things because to them it's just trivial. But everything that's written in the scriptures is very important. So let's go from there to the book of Proverbs, the, uh, the 30th chapter and the fourth verse. Who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fists? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name and what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? And the reason why this is being pushed out there and this question is being asked is because over time there has been a great deception that has been portrayed upon the earth and has covered the minds of these people out here and they they are ignorant of the fact of of what language you know the the actual bible uh, or the torah tanakh and the bible was written in so you have to go back to those origins in order to find out what those names are because the lord said what is his name and what is his son's name if thou canst tell so let's go from there to the book of St. John, chapter 17, verse 5, because this is the very first thing that Yahweh Shai told unto his disciples. St. John 17 and 5. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. I have manifested thy name. Unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Then they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. So the Lord, the first thing Yahweh Shai did with the disciples is he gave him, they he gave them the name of the most high. And when you go to this word name, la bear with me here. Was that the fifth verse or sixth verse? Yeah, right here. The name, you have the word, the Greek word onoma. And the Greek word onoma is name, universally of proper names, because this is the Most High's proper name. This is Yahweh Shai's proper name. You have names, you have um, um, surnames, you have nicknames, but you have proper names. So the proper names of the Heavenly Father and His Son are Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. So now, that was the first thing that Yahweh Shai gave him was the name of the Most High. So let's go from there to the book of Revelation, the 14th chapter, which I have over here already. Revelation, the 14th chapter, and the first verse. We're going to read it here, and then we're going to jump to the Greek. And then we're going to jump into the Hebrew. Revelation 14 and 1. And I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the Mount Zion, and with him 144,000, having his father's name written in their foreheads. Now that's all it says in the King James translation. But when you go to these different translations, uh, in the different um, translations that they have, uh, Spanish and other languages, the Greek and the Hebrew, there are certain translations that have... Uh, um, the Heavenly Father's name and the Son's name. Now let's scroll down through here to the morphological Greek New Testament. And what I have here is a sentence or a list of Greek words and, they, and, and they're going to pretty much break down what uh, um, this actual verse here says. In the actual Greek. So the word to. Uh, okay. They don't break it down here. All right. To is the. Right there. Onoma is name. How to is his. So. His. His name. Name his. Or his name. Whose name? Yahweh Shai's name. Kai. Which is the Greek word for and. Tu, which is the onoma again name to or in patros how to 
So Onoma Autu, his name, Kai, and two Onoma, two Pachos, Autu, his father's name. So it's the, the name of Yahweh Shai and the name of the father. And, you know, in order for you to really get this, you have to really sit down and go through these words and get the understanding of it. I don't expect anyone that's new to this to really understand this right away. This is like a little bit of meat, but it's basic stuff. And our job is to simplify and edify. And there are certain things that have to be brought out and it takes time. You know, you have to break it down and you have to do research. Like I was watching Elder Apostar's uh, video, uh, Nerva, the, uh, the Nerva Ant Antonine Dynasty, when the Israelites ruled the world. And that's 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 meat because it's history, you know, and it goes into Jake. You know, so there's different lessons that you have to go into that that are going to be a little bit more complicated or a little bit more advanced. And, you know, this is good for the brothers that, that have been in this for a while and the brothers that, that are just coming in, you know, just just uh, uh, hold on to your seat, put on your seatbelt and just uh, watch, take notes. And you could go back and, and get, you know, and I'll go over it afterwards. So that was a Greek way of saying his father's his name and his father's name. And, it's, and it goes on to say written in their foreheads. Now, what I want to do is go here because this breaks it down even further. This is Revelation 14. And it says here, to the Onoma name, out to of him. This is Yahweh Shai's name. Kai and to the Onoma name, to of the Patros father, how to of him. So his name and his father's name written on the foreheads of them. Why? Because these names are very important in their proper name form back in the Hebrew for salvation and you have a lot of people i said it doesn't matter you know you can call them whatever you want to call them your plate yogurt jesus whatever no the scriptures say different you know so what i want to do now is i want to go into the hebrew in revelation 14 and 1 i'm uh, yeah 14 and 1 and on this one i'm going to pull up this uh document here and i want to write out what what it says to give you a better understanding. So we have Sham Wa Wa Sham A A Ya Wa. Okay. Let's get that. Let's make this a little bigger so y'all could see. Let's go with the uh uh, 72 okay so you have there you have shamwa washam abayawa now the name sham means name whenever you see a wa at the end of a word it means his or he like you see here sham wa that's a sha ma and a wa sham wa his name okay Right his name, then it says washam. So this wa is and, and then you have shum, which is again name. So shum, uh, his name, shamwa, his name, washam, and name. Because when you have the wa at the beginning of a, of a word that is not connected to the actual word, it's and. So shamwa. His name, Washam, and name. Then you have Abba Yawa. Now the name Abba means father. And the name and, and the uh, letter Yah here, uh, as it's connected here, as you see, Abba Yawa, this makes it possessive. This Yah here makes this phrase possessive. Because it, it who is it's a father, but it's not just a father, it's his father. And then the wa at the end of the word, so this makes it possessive. And the wa is his. So what do you have? 
you have his name and name the father, his father. So that's what this phrase here means. You know, Shamwa, name his or his name, Washam and name Abayawa, his father. And then you read on, and the rest of it is, 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 is it speaks about the name being put into your forehead, into our foreheads, because those names are important. So see, see how you had to go back into the origins of the language in order to be able to really extract what this is really saying. And this is why when we read in the book of Proverbs, the 30th chapter, it says, what is his name and what is his father's name? If thou canst tell, because the world cannot tell. Why? Because it, ha it has been blinded by the light. <laughs> Salak, it was having a little fun. Blinded by the light, you know, of, of, of Satan. Uh, let's go to 2 Corinthians 4 and 3. And it says, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, and whom the God of this world, see, God is all small uh, case. This is a, 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 a deity, a, a God, a, a judge, a magistrate. So who is the God of this world? Esau, the so-called white man, because Satan is ruling this world, but he's using his minions, the Edomites, to rule this world. That's why the scriptures say the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. It says, in whom the God of this world has blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Yahushai, who is the image of the Most High, should shine unto them. So this, so these people out here are blinded. That's why you have the scriptures say, what is his name and what is his father's name, if thou canst tell. And when you go to Revelation 14 and to the origins of the language, it tells you his name and his father's name in both the Hebrew, the Greek, when you go to the Spanish, it brings it out. And I'm pretty sure if I if I was to go through any of these translations here, somewhere down the line, some of these translations will bring out the same exact thing. But the God that they worship is Serapis Christus. That's why they keep calling Jesus Christ, Jesus Christo, you know? And they're not going to call upon the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai because they have been blinded to it. So now let's jump from there to the book of St. John. St. John. Chapter 14 and uh, verse 13. And what and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If ye shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And this is why people will read scriptures like that and say, Well, when you read the Bible, it says Jesus Christ or Jesus Christ. So that, that's his name. No. You have to get the full understanding. And this is how um, heavy this is because this is pretty much, even though it's simple, even though it's easy to understand, it's really a mystery. That's why most people can't get it. And the people that do go to the origins of the language. So like it, brothers. Hey, shalom, my God. I broke it down. All right, so lock it, brothers. You know, I had to take that call. You know, so um, so that's what it is. It's a mystery to these to the majority of these people because even if they wake up to the fact that they have to call on the name of the Lord and they try to go back to the Hebrew, they get they're stuck with your your Hoshua, your Hushua, your Hua, and all these other names because these are all stumbling blocks. Okay. All right, whatever. Your head is flat. How about that? And you don't exist. How about that? Goodbye, sucker.
So that's why the Yahweh Shai said that anything that you should ask in my name, he will do it because it is important to go back into the origins of the language. The man, look, what the man, it tells you in the scriptures, and this is the thing, people will read this, but it'll go over their head. Well, then again, too, most people don't read. These so-called Christians, they really don't read. Hebrews 7, 14, it is, for it is evident that our Lord, Lord sprang out of Judah, of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. So it is evident thing that the Lord sprang out of Judah. What language did Judah speak? That, that's, those are Israelites. So pretty much they speak the Hebrew language because that was the language that we spoke in the past. All right? So when you call on the name of the Lord, you have to go back into the origins of the language that he spoke. You know, and then we've been tirel tirelessly saying this, and we're going to continue saying it because we are standing stiffly for the name of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. And Lord's will, we continue on all the way until the end. This is Acts 4, another scripture, Acts 4 and 10. It says, Be it known unto you all and to all the people of Israel that by the name of, it says here, Jesus Christ, but the name is not Jesus Christ, it's Yahweh Shai. Hamashiach. He is a savior, the anointed of Nazareth, whom ye crucified, whom the Most High raised from the dead. Even by him does this man stand here before you whole. And when you go to the Greek of that name, so called name Jesus, is what? Jesus, right? But what does it say? Root word etymology. Now they got the longer form of the name. You have a shorter form, you had a longer form, and then you have the proper name. Yahweh, yeah, this one says Yahweh Shawai, and then you see right there, it says English Joshua. When you click on it, that's not the name, that's just a longer form of the name. But then when you scroll down here, they show you Yahweh Shai. So this name, Jesus, the origins of it is what? Hebrew origin. It's not a Greek origin. It's not an English origin. It's not a language, uh, Latin origin. It's not a, any other language origin except for Hebrew. So if that's the case, you would have to go back into the original language to get his proper name. All right? And, it's, and then if anything, if they would have uh, uh, wrote anything in the New Testament uh, where it mentions the Messiah's name, they should have used the name Joshua. Instead of Jesus. All right. Because Jesus doesn't mean anything. When you trace it back into the Hebrew, it doesn't mean anything. Now, if they were to put Ye, Ye Soder, you know, because Soder in the Greek means Savior, that would have been something closer to the name than, than uh, Jesus or, or your so called Jesus. All right, so now let's go from there to the book of Exodus because we're going we get into the meat of it now, baby. Exodus 23 and 13. One of the elder, this is one of the elder apostles' uh, favorite precepts. Exodus 23 13. And in all things that I have said unto you, be circumspect. Why? Because everything that is written in the law, in the commandments, in the, in the Tanakh, in the Torah, all gives us instructions on how to conduct ourselves you know and to be circumspect because there's if you really read, read if you really go into the law and you really read all those different laws you're like wow man it's, it's like a, it brings you a whole new light on things compared to the things that you were taught then it says to be circumspect it says and make no mention of the name of other gods so we're not supposed to make a mention of any of the names of other gods neither let it be heard out of thy mouth and we're not even supposed to even utter their names but the only reason that we utter the names of these other gods is for the sake of edification to let people know that those are not the names and if you do the research if the spirit is with you you're going to get back into the ancient origins of those names which are which go back into the Hebrew, which is Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. All right, now let's go from there to Joshua, twenty third chapter in the sixth verse. It says, "Be ye therefore very courageous to keep and do all the 
all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, that you turn not aside therefore therefrom to the right hand or to the left, that you come not among these nations, these that remain among you, neither make mention of the name of their gods. So by, when you start calling on the name Jesus Christ, you're calling on the name of the God of these nations because they are the ones that created that name. They are the ones that set that name up. They are the ones that that that, that you are reverencing when you so-called say you believe in, 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 in Jesus, so-called Jesus. Well, you may believe on Jesus, but you don't believe on Yahweh Shai. You don't believe in a true Messiah. You believe in a flower pot God. You got a flower pot for a hat on his head. All right, so now let's go from there. It says, no cause to swear by them, neither serve them, nor bow yourselves unto them. And people bow down to this image constantly. They go to the church, they throw up them gang signs, they bow down to this image. They put, this, the Latin tribes, they put water and bread and money and, and apples and shit to, the, to this demon. And this is why the Most High is so pissed off. He's so pissed off, man. It is the same thing Jake was doing back in the wilderness before this image even existed. They were doing that. All right. So now let's go from there to uh, the book of Psalms 16. I'm going to start at 1. The point is in 4. I mean, there's a lot more, but I'll start at 1. It says, preserve me, O Most High, for in thee do I put my trust. And you have to know who you're putting your trust in. By you saying you put your trust in Jesus, you're putting your trust in this. All right? If you say Jehovah, you're putting your trust in, in this. All right? That's not Yahweh. This is Satan at best. All right, it says, O my soul, thou hast said unto the Lord, Yahweh, thou art my Lord. My goodness extendeth not to thee, but to the saints that are in the earth, and to the excellent, excellent in whom is all my delight. Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. So you're so a lot of these people out here, they're gonna be judged when that time comes because they're following after these other deities. The Lord said. Isaiah 55 and 6 Seek ye the Lord while he may be found Call ye upon him while he is near Because there's going to come a point in time Where you're going to be in a situation Where you're going to really need To call upon these names And if you've been lollygagging And bullshitting and calling on this devil here Sweet Jesus, Jesus Dulce You ain't going to be saved, you ain't going to be delivered Hosea 5 and 15 I will go and return to my place Till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. Why? Because they're not seeking the face of the Lord. They're seeking the face of these deities, these, these false deities, these false gods, as they have been doing for, for ages. And it's no different today. And back then they thought they were doing the right thing. Today they think they're doing the right thing, but they've been deceived. There's a veil put over these people's eyes. It says, in their affliction, they will seek me early. But guess what? When you go to seek the Lord early in your affliction, he's not going to hear you. Why? Isaiah 55 and 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him while he is near. And he is near. This is why his word is going out. And this is, this is not the image of the Messiah. The image of the Messiah is closer to this than anything else. Let's see if there's a bigger note. Let's see if it comes up. I mean, it's a little bigger there. This is a, a better or closer depiction of Yahweh Shai, which is found in Italy, in Rome. All right? So now, let's go from there. Uh, it says, Their drink offerings of blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my, my lips. Why? Because there is a certain amount of Israelites that are written in the book of life that are a part of the elect and there's a certain amount of Israelites which is two-thirds that are written written up to be destroyed all right so now let's go from there to the book of Zephaniah chapter 1 and verse 5 it says and them that are turned back from Yahweh 
by Hashem Yahushai, and those that have not sought the Lord Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai. I'm sorry, that was the, fifth, the sixth verse. That's that's a good verse too. And them that worship the host of heaven upon the housetops, this is the sun, moon, stars, and them that worship and that swear by the Lord Yahweh by Hashem Yahushai, and that swear by Malcolm. Now Malcolm is what go, goes back to Molech, which the word Molech, Malcolm, the Milcom, they all mean the same thing. They all mean king. And this was one of the major deities among, I believe it was among the Canaanites. So you were worshiping Molech. So you're trying to worship the Lord and you're trying to worship Molech. And that does not work. That does not jive. 1 Corinthians 10 and 20 says, But I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrificed, these actual heathens, and even the, the Israelites that was in that Gentile state of mind, they sacrificed to devils and not to the Most High. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. So by you worshiping this guy here, you're worshiping devils. It says, you cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. Why? Because the Most High is not going to have it any other way. He is a jealous power. Then he said that the, the, when when he, when these great men that were supposed to be elders, when he he had uh, Ezekiel look into them, into into what they were doing, he said he said they put up the image of jealousy because that image caused the Most High to be in a rage, man. The Most High, you know, he's just like if you if you if you have a woman and you're into that woman. And you see your woman talking to some dude, and it's not either her father or her brother or you know somebody like that, and you don't know who the dude is. You're gonna get upset. Like, what the fuck you doing talking to? You know what's going on? You're gonna get jealous. You know why? Because because that's that she's your woman. So the same thing with us. We're the Most High's woman, and he gets jealous when we start worshiping and deifying anything else besides him. So now let's go from there to. The book of Acts. Now we're going to get into the heart. We got into the meat of it. Now we're going to get into the heart of it. It's Acts 26 and 13. This is uh, the Apostle Paul giving his testimony to Agrippa about his conversion. Salakia. It says, At midday, O king, I saw on the way a light from heaven above the brightness of the sun. Shining round about me and them which journey with me. And when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue. Why do you think this was written there? This was written there so that we can know that the language of the heavens is the Hebrew. Because this is Yahweh Shai himself coming from the heavens, speaking to the apostle Paul. And why did it say so blatantly that he spoke to him in the Hebrew tongue? Because the Most High already knew what was going to go down in these days. He knew that they were going to be calling on Jesus Duce and sweet Jesus. You know? Sweet Jesus, let me kill this. <laughs> they knew they were going to be calling on this devil. You know? So now, uh, where are we at? So and when we were all fallen to the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am, it says Jesus here, whom thou persecutest, but we know it's Yahweh Shai, because when you go to that name, Jesus, right here, G2424, the Hebrew aura is of Hebrew origin. Root word etymology. Hebrew origin. And it goes back to Yahweh Shai, not the longer form of the name, but the proper name. Because you have Hawashai, which is Hosea. You have Yahawashawai, which is uh, Yehoshua. And you have Yahawashai, which is Joshua or Jesus, which really is, really technically is Joshua, not Jesus. So anywhere in the New Testament where you see the name Jesus should have, should say the name Joshua, because that's what it really goes back to. And that's why when you go, and, and there's no excuse, excuse, because when you go to the Old Testament and you, and you go to the book of Joshua, Right, Joshua 1 and 1 Now after the death of Moses The servant of the Lord It came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua 
Now here they have the longer form, right? Yahweh Shawai. But now check this out. When you go here through the Hebrew portion of it and you read through here, what does it say? Yahweh Shai. This is the name of the Lord, Yahweh Shai. And this is what the Greek goes back to. It goes back to the Hebrew origin. So this is why it was so important for this to be brought out here in the book of Acts, the uh, 26th chapter, that this voice that came to Paul, that spoke to him, and spoke to him in the Hebrew tongue, was Yahweh Shai. And this is why the Most High is going to take away that, uh, um, that, um, that name, Jesus Christ, away out of the mouth of all Israel. Even these Israelites that know that they're Israelites. And it's a damn shame, man. It's a damn shame that, that, that you have these men that know that they're Israelites that are still pushing that damn Jesus Christ crap. And they know that it's wrong. All for fucking money, man. <sighs> All right. This is the prologue of Ecclesiasticus. It says, Wherefore, let, us, let me entreat you to read it with favor and attention and to pardon us, wherein we may seem to come short of some words, which we have labored to interpret. So it took time to translate from the Hebrew into this other language in the Greek and into any other language. And it takes a, a, it's a laborsome task to be able to try and give the understanding or the uh, translation of what is written in Hebrew into another language because the Hebrew language is straightforward and other languages have so many other uh, uh, innuendos and you know different inflections or whatever the hell you want to call them in it to try to give it the same power. And even though you find the, the best words to explain it, you still can't explain it properly as it's supposed to be written, you know, in its proper tongue. It says, for the same things uttered in Hebrew and translated into another tongue have not the same force in them. And this is why you have no excuse because when you go to the book, to the to the New Testament and you see the name Jesus, it takes you to Jesus and it tells you that Jesus is of Hebrew origin. So why call on this when this allegedly comes from Hebrew origin? So you have to go back to the Hebrew origin because that's what the Messiah spoke. He spoke Hebrew. He didn't speak Greek. He didn't speak Latin. He didn't speak English. He didn't speak Spanish. He spoke the Hebrew tongue. And this is why this Hebrew tongue is going to be is, is being brought back to us now. All right. Uh, so. So it says, and not only these things, but the law itself and the prophets and the rest of the books have no small difference when they are spoken in their own language. And this is why it's important to go back into the Hebrew language to get the proper understanding. And the main thing, we, we never said, like them clowns at IUIC, where's Akeem? I'm waiting for Akeem to put a comment up there. Let's give him three seconds. I, I knew it. <laughs> you know, this is why it's so important to go back into the Hebrew language. The Lash Lashuan Kodash. That's right. Like the brother Jake time put up. Lashuan Kodash, which means the holy tongue. You know why? Because this is our language. And this is what we're explaining. And we never said, ever, ever, never, ever said that if you don't learn the Hebrew, you won't be saved. That is a blatant, bold face, bald face lie, man. We never said that. I challenge anybody to, to, to find a video where any of us ever said that if you don't know the Hebrew language perfectly, you can't be saved. You know, you should want to learn your language, but if you if, if you can't learn the language, at least get the names of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai and get, get the basis to, to, to get you around in the language. And that's all we say. All right, so now let's go from there to the book of Zephaniah. Like I said, we get into the heart of it now. Zephaniah 3 and 9. For then will I turn to the people of pure language, that they may all call upon the name of the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem Yahushai, they're serving with one consent. Because the Most High wants his people to be in unity. You know? Or once the proper doctrine and the proper gospel is taught. Okay? Because we're not all going to come together right now. 
but the elect will come together in that one frame of mind as it tells you in ephesians the first uh fourth chapter there's one doctrine one gospel you know <clears throat> so now let's go from there to the book of hosea and this is what really prompted me through the spirit of yahweh to do the lesson so i was reading through the book of hosea uh, i believe it was last week and i ran across this this, this scripture here which we have went into before but you know there's so many scriptures in the bible that sometimes you forget you know and then the spirit when you read certain things the spirit brings it back to your remembrance this is a uh, hebrews uh i'm sorry hosea 2 14. therefore behold i will allure her, allure her and bring her into the wilderness and speak comfortably unto her this is dealing with the most high bringing israel back together and bringing bringing a, a favor a bestowing favor back on us and i will give her, her give her her vineyards from from thence and the valley of Achor for a door of hope and she shall sing there as in the days of her youth and as in the day when she came up out of the land of Egypt and it shall be at that day saith the Lord Yahweh Bashem Yahushai when you go to this word Lord it's Yahweh that thou shalt call me Ishi now what does the word Ishi mean it goes to the word Ayasha which means my man or my husband and shall call me no more Baali. Now, what does Baali mean? Baalia, which means my Lord. So you're gonna call me my husband or my man, and you're not gonna call me my Lord anymore. Why? Because these different deities out here, these different gods, they are the ones that are known as Baal. It says, For I will take away. The Lord said, I will take away the names of Baalim out of their mouth. So this crap here, Serapis Crispy, you know, Serapis uh, uh, Milky, or whatever the hell you want to call them, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus Christo, all of these names are going to be taken out of the mouth of Israel. It says, for I, I, this is the Most High speaking, will take away the names of Balaam out of, the, out of her mouth. So out of the name of Israel's mouth, all of these names are going to be taken away. This is why the name of this lesson is called, the name Jesus Christ shall be taken away. Uh, going back, for I will take away the names of Balaam out of their out of her mouth, and they shall no more be remembered by their name. Why? Because they're going to come back to the heavenly Father Yahweh Bashem and they're going to call upon His proper name and upon His Son's proper name for the, for uh, uh, finally. But this nonsense has gone on too far. It's gone on for too long. Zechariah 49 and the Lord shall be king over all the earth and that day shall there be one Lord Yahweh and his name one And, and if his name is going to be one guess what the, his right hand man Which is his son is going to also be included in that Proverbs 30 and 4 at the end who has established the ends of the earth What is his name and what is his son's name if thou canst tell? So it's got to be both names Okay, because Yahweh Shai is the Messiah that came to bring adoption back to us and bring favor and peace to us between Yahweh and us. All right, so that there you go, and they shall no more be remembered by their name. Um, it says, And in that day will I make a covenant for them with the beasts of the field and with the fowls of heaven and with the creeping things of the ground, and I will break the bow and the sword and the battle out of the earth and i will make them to lie down safely and this is what we're waiting for so we're in the time now where all hell and chaos is going on we're we're pretty much our hearts are, are pretty much sorrowful we're melted you know we're, we're, we 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 have no assurance of our, of our life and lives in this uh, society you know we we're like a like a leaf shaking in the wind we like that like that that ripe fig if they shake the tree the right way or the wind blows the right way we fall out the tree so we're in, in, in dire straits and in dire needs of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai coming to deliver us and save us and protect us. So in all of these all, all of these perils, the Lord said that He would give us His name. He would and we would call upon His name, and He would be the one that was going to be there to protect us because we have stood uh, strongly for His name. Matter of fact, let's go to Psalms ninety-one. and bear with me for a minute psalms ninety one fourteen. because he hath set his love upon me therefore will i deliver him i will set him on high because he hath known my name 
And the name of the Most High is not Jehovah. It's not Lord God, you know, Almighty, Most High. Th those are none of, his, none of his proper names. Those are titles of his, but his proper name is Yahweh. His proper, the son of his, uh, uh, the name of his son, his prop, the proper name of his son is Yahweh Shai. So now let's go from there to the book of, I'm going to leave that one. Uh, in case we go to go back, Second Corinthians eleven and four. I'm, I'm gonna start at one. What to the most high you could bear with me a little of my folly, and indeed bear with me, for I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Yahweh Shai. Why? Because the most high gave everything over to the Messiah. But I fear, at least by any means, as a serpent beguiled Eve through his subtility. So your mind should be corrupted from the simplicity that is in Hamashiach Yahushai. So this this thing is simple; it's not that complicated, you know. But there are people out there that complicate it, and there are people out there that want to stay on this Serapis Christus spirit, that Jesus Christ spirit, that Jesus Christo spirit. Even among Israelites, that know that they're Israelites, they want to stay in this men in this mentality. It says, for if he that cometh preaches another Jesus, another Messiah, another Savior, whom we have not preached, or if he receive another spirit, which you have not received, because back then you didn't, this, this guy was what was, was around. The, the, uh, the name Jesus Christ wasn't around back then. It didn't come around to the 1700s. The name Jesus Christo, that's not, that doesn't mean nothing. Those are just Greek letters thrown together. To so-called represent the original name of our Messiah, which is Yahweh Shai. There you go. You know, there you go. Has nothing to do with this this demon right here. It says, or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might well, well bear with him. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Yahweh Shai, and no marvel for Satan himself trans uh, is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. And all these people are going to be dealt with, man. Nate. And uh, uh, um, Bubble Light, uh, well, yeah, Bubble Light, Blackfish, well, whoever's changing the name of the Lord, all them different uh, uh, alphabet, uh, uh, alphabet camps that keep pushing that name Jesus Christ out there, you know, the Most High is going to deal with every last one of them. Now, let's go from there to the book of Exodus 23 and 32. It says, thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their God. So we weren't supposed to make any covenants with these devils, you know? And that that na na that nastiness that you're spewing out of your mouth of Jesus and Christ and all that, that's just pure blasphemy, pure blatant garbage. This is what we're supposed to do with those, those images and, and those names. Deuteronomy 7.22. And the Lord thy power will, uh, Yahweh, thy power will put... Out those nations before thee by little and little Thou mayest not consume them at once Least the beasts of the field increase upon thee Salakia. <clears throat> But the Lord thy power shall deliver them unto thee and shall, and shall destroy them with a mighty destruction Until they be destroyed And he shall deliver their kings into thy, thine hand And thou shalt destroy their names from under heaven There shall no man be able to stand before thee Until thou have destroyed them the graven images of their gods shall you burn with fire. So this garbage right here should be burned with fire. This image and that name, Jesus Christ, should all be burned with fire. Because this is nothing but madness. This is nothing but blasphemy. This is nothing but demonic crap, you know, worshiping these other different deities and these different gods. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, you know, take Take it unto thee, lest thou be snared therein, for it is an abomination to the Lord thy power. Yahweh Bashem Yahweh thy power. Neither shalt thou bring an abomination into thine house, 
least thou be cursed. Thou, least, least thou be a cursed thing like it. Because this is this is a cursed thing. This is cursed. And that's why these people that have this image in their house, they're cursed. And they don't even know it. But thou shalt utterly, utterly detest it, and thou shalt surely abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. Now let's go from there to the book of Isaiah. I'm sorry, Jeremiah. Fifth chapter. In the seventh verse. How shall I pardon thee for this? Thy children have forsaken me and sworn by them that are no gods. You Israelites out there, you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians, you're swearing by this. When you call on the name Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ, you, 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 you're, you're swearing to this nonsense here, this garbage here. How shall I pardon thee for this? So the Most High is not going to pardon you for that unless you repent. Thy children have forsaken me, and you have forsaken the Lord. And sworn by them that are no gods. You sworn by Jesus Dulce, sweet Jesus, and all this other nonsense that you've been worshiping. It says, when I had fed them to the full, they then committed adultery. And this is adultery because the Most High said he's married unto us. It says, when I had fed them to the full, they then committed adultery and assembled themselves by the troops in the harlot's houses. And that's why the majority of you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native American Indians are in them churches. You know, paying homage to this nonsense here, this demon here. This is Jesus Christ, the, the demon. This is Satan right here. This is not the Lord. I remember years ago, I told my mother, you know, she had my picture ne next to Caesar Borgia or actually uh, 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 Serapis Christus. And I said, Ma, why, you know, why, why do you have my, my, why do you have my picture next to the devil? Or why do you have my picture on the devil? She said, oh my goodness, it was me, it was me. You know, next time I came over there, guess what? My picture was gone, but sweet Jesus was still up. Shit. She ain't trying to let go of sweet Jesus. She said, man, the hell with you. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And the last scripture I have is Isaiah 48 and 11. It says, for mine own sake, even for mine own sake, will I do it. For how shall my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory unto another. So the Lord, Yahweh Bashem Shai, is not going to give their glory to another. This is another. This is another Jesus. It's just another. And the Lord is not going to give their glory unto this nonsense. You know? They're not going to give their they're, they're not going to give their glory unto this nonsense. You know, so the Lord, as the name of this lesson is, the name Jesus Christ shall be taken away. It's going to be taken away, and it is being taken away now. And, and, and in process of time, anyone that's call, calls on the name Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, whatever, however you want to say it, is going to be destroyed. All right? So with that, I hope you brothers and few sisters have been edified. Until the next time I say, Shalom.